So uh, I, I would like to mention about the uh, production uh, opportunities at our laboratory. Uh, we have epitaxial growth molecular mean epitaxy system, uh, and uh, we usually use a sputtering technique uh, for the deposition of metal and metal oxide thin films. Uh, and uh, we have also bulk growth, Chokraski and Chiropolos. Uh, we, uh, pro we can produce germanium and sapphire at our laboratory and also inject printing. Of course, I'm uh, showing here uh, only one of the characterization and production systems uh, which are available in uh, our laboratory. Um, so here you see um, MB system, magnetron sputtering system. We have uh, two magnetron sputtering system at our laboratory. Um, one of them is co-sputtering system, which we used in our studies, which is the device which you uh, used uh, in our studies. And here you see Chokraski system for production of uh, germanium bulks and Chiropolis system for sapphire production and inject printing. Uh, we have also uh, uh, more, uh, stru structural, morphological, and uh, optical electrical characterization systems in our laboratory. Uh, the main uh, of them are um, XRD, SIMS, XPS, AFM for optical characterization, PL, FTR, uh, ellipsometric analysis, UV visible, and for electrical measurements, we have whole DLTS, IVCV, and solar simulator, and uh, quantum efficiency. Here you see the characterization systems, uh, some of them. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, different uh, characterization systems. So uh, today I will uh, talk about the growth and uh, characterization of castorite solar, solar cells, uh, which we produced at our laboratory, and also uh, CTS, copper uh, two tin sulfur three uh, films. And also uh, I will show uh, some results uh, which we obtained from the uh, solar cell devices. Uh, first, uh, uh, I, will, uh, I would like to start uh, with uh, uh, solar cells. Actually, the solar cells are uh, classified into uh, three main groups. Uh, the first group uh, includes uh, crystalline, crystal, crystalline uh, silicon-based, wafer-based solar cells, and the second uh, generation of solar cells uh, comprises symphonium solar cells um, such as CIGS, cadmium telluride, and amorphous silicon. Uh, and the third group of the uh, solar cells uh, includes organic solar cells uh, with emerging uh, cell uh, structures. So uh, the uh, market share, when we evaluate uh, in terms of the market share, the uh, solar cells, as you know, the crystalline silicon-based crystalline, uh, silicon solar cells have a big market share over 90%, 93% approximately. And uh, the second generation of solar cells has uh, a low uh, share, uh, approximately uh, 7%. Uh, and uh, but but symphonium solar cells uh, are a good alternative to uh, first generation uh, solar cells, crystalline based solar cells, because uh, when we uh, when we evaluate the production processes of silicon based solar cells, uh, the production uh, processes are very high. They have a high cost because of the production, poor silicon and uh, silicon production processes, uh, such as the growth of uh, crystals, mono, uh, mono and multi-crystal uh, silicons, and uh, slicing them, in, uh, slicing them, and also uh, doping them. Uh, and uh, the silicon uh, is a, an absorber material, which has an indirect band gap. That's why uh, we need uh, uh, high thickness of uh, silicon uh, solar cells, uh, such, uh, 
approximately uh, 100 micrometer with the thickness uh, of 100 micrometer, but thin film solar cells uh, has a, a high absorption uh, coefficient. That's why uh, the thickness with, uh, which is uh, smaller than five micrometer is enough uh, to use uh, these materials as absorber uh, layers. And also they have an uh, opportunity uh, to uh, coat, to coat them onto flexible and uh, light substrates. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, CIGS, uh, CIGS and cadmium telluride solar cells are the leading technologies. Here you see the record efficiency values for these solar cells. Um, uh, uh, CIGS solar cell has a uh, high efficiency of 23.4 percent which is very close to multi-crystalline based solar cells as you see and uh, silicon based solar cells um, uh, the, the high the highest efficiencies obtained by silicon uh, based uh, solar cells is very close to their theoretical uh, values uh, that's an important point uh, so um, when we look at the leading uh, uh, solar cell technologies, cadmium telluride and CIGS, uh, there are uh, some disadvantages uh, with this kind of uh, materials, such as the toxicity of cadmium, uh, scarcity of indium, gallium and selenium, and, uh, selenium, and also high cost of indium. Uh, here uh, ye, here uh, you see abundance of the elements in earth crust. You can also see the scarcity of indium and gallium and also tellurium in this graph. Uh, so um, we, uh, th that's why uh, castorite materials is a good, is a very good alternative to uh, uh, C uh, CIGS and cadmium telluride solar cells. Uh, and uh, because it includes earth abundant and environmentally friendly elements, and uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's really a low cost. And uh, also uh, it has very uh, similar crystal structure, crystal optical and electrical structure to uh, CIGS uh, based solar cell. So uh, if we look at the uh, main properties of uh, CZTS, you see it uh, crystallized into uh, in two different in uh, uh, crystal structure, castorite uh, and stenite. Castorite uh, uh, is uh, more stable um, than stenite structure according to uh, the uh, theoretical results uh, reported in literature. Uh, and um, uh, it has a, a one, one band gap value is around 1.5 electron volt and it has a, a, a high absorption coefficient which is bigger than uh, 10 to 5 centimeter per, uh, per centimeter and um, the shock liquor theoretical efficiency limit is about 32 percent for this kind of material it has a tetragon tetragonal crystal structure uh, so uh, if, if you uh, look at in this uh, graph, uh, you will see um, the uh, second generation uh, solar cells uh, has uh, introduced uh, since uh, 1970s, uh, especially if you look at CIGS and cadmium telluride solar cells. And uh, now uh, their efficiencies uh, ha have reached uh, up to uh, 23.4%. But uh, for um, castorite solar cells, uh, it's the most promising material uh, for um, among the inorganic absorber uh, layers. Actually, you you see the efficiency was obtained uh, by IBM uh, in 2010, uh, and uh, then uh, in a short while, uh, the, this kind of uh, solar cells uh, showed a, 
uh, a big uh, uh, enhancement in the efficiency and uh, the best efficiency was obtained by IBM again uh, as 12.6% uh, in uh, 2013. Uh, this was a uh, copper zinc tin sulfur selenium material which was produced by uh, non-vacuum techniques. So, uh, but uh, since uh, 2013, the efficiency value did not uh, increase uh, so far. Uh, so, um, the, uh, despite, sorry, uh, despite uh, much effort, uh, the efficiency value uh, has not increased so far. Uh, so because uh, there are uh, some uh, problems uh, with uh, this material, uh, at first I would like to uh, I would like to mention about uh, VOC deficit in these materials. So uh, Giraldo and et al uh, reported a review article about uh, this problem. Uh, here you see two graphs from their article. So um, when we uh, compare the efficient, uh, efficiency value, uh, efficiency values uh, of uh, uh, CZTS and uh, CIGS materials, uh, as you see in the graphic, uh, according to band gap, uh, in a low uh, band gap region, uh, there's not a difference between the efficiency values and also in the white uh, band cap region, uh, there is not a uh, big difference. There is not a big difference between the efficiency values, but it's very interesting. Uh, if you look at the intermediate uh, region, there is a big uh, difference between the efficiency values. That's a very interesting results. And uh, that's why the researchers focused on uh, VOC deficit in these materials, um, uh, then uh, they uh, calculated uh, VOC deficit uh, by considering uh, the uh, band cap region, this band cap region for these materials, as you see, uh, for intermediate band cap, there is a big difference between the uh, VOC deficit. So how can we uh, calculate the VOC deficit? Uh, so. Uh, it just uh, uh, just subtract uh, VOC uh, value which was uh, obtained uh, by experimentally uh, from the shock liquor theoretical limit then you will obtain VOC deficit so um, these uh, big VOC deficit uh, results for, uh, originates from uh, de uh, deep defects uh, the composition uh, and band gap uh, fluctuations introduced by cationic disorder and uh, thin, uh, thin uh, slows and uh, short carriers lifetime and also secondary phases in um, these materials. So here you see uh, a lot of secondary phases can, uh, can be occurred in the material, binary and uh, ternary secondary phases. Uh, for these materials, the composition is very important because all these deep defects and band, band gap fluctuations uh, depends on the composition of the material. That's really very important. And also uh, thin loss is an uh, important uh, key uh, in terms of understanding the VOC deficit in the materials uh, because it uh, strongly influences influence uh, the uh, composition of the material. So, uh, so half, uh, the question is that how to improve the efficiency of castorite based, based solar cells. Uh, now, uh, doping and allowing st strategies uh, are a very hot topic in, in castorite community. Uh, so, um, first, uh, uh, I, I would like to mention about intrinsic doping in the materials. Uh, so uh, here you see uh, some kind of defects uh, which uh, 
form uh, uh, in the material vacancies, interstitials, antisites, and uh, defect clusters. Uh, these uh, defects uh, are formed uh, naturally in the material, actually, uh, according to the composition of the films, uh, the, the kind of uh, defects in the material uh, change. So, uh, uh, and, and the other uh, the other doping and alloying strategies we can call uh, them as extrinsic doping and substitutional alloying here you see the per uh, sorry the uh, periodic table so uh, you can uh, dope uh, 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 so alkaline uh, alkaline elements like uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, uh, uh, um, and uh, 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 the, these materials. And also, you can make a substitutional alloying uh, by using uh, silver, cadmium, uh, uh, silver, uh, cadmium, uh, silicon. Uh, Tin, sorry, silicon and germanium. So, uh, the, uh, the alloying means that uh, you will uh, substitute copper, copper in the material with uh, silver, and uh, subst substitution of uh, zinc by uh, cadmium. So, uh, I mean, uh, here uh, the main uh, uh, the main idea is uh, that. Uh, is 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 used is to use uh, the isoelectronic elements uh, as you see in the uh, periodic table. So if we uh, look at the uh, CTS absorber films properties, uh, actually uh, uh, the res uh, the researchers uh, has focused on these materials. Uh, this material uh, really has. Uh, gained great, great attention uh, in last years uh, because, uh, as you see, it, it doesn't include zinc in, inside. Uh, that's a big advantage uh, to um, avoid uh, the formation of the secondary phases related to zinc element in the material. Uh, this material is a, a more uh, stable uh, compared to castorite material. Uh, and um, it, it's, its mineral name is called as mohide, and it, its band gap uh, uh, changes uh, in the range of uh, 0 0.8 uh, and uh, 1.8 electron volt. And uh, it, it has also p-type conductivity as a kesterite material, and it also has a, a high absorption coefficient. And uh, the theoretical efficiency limit uh, is about 30%. But um, this uh, material exhibits polymorphic structure, uh, su uh, such as cubic, tetragonal, triclinic, and monoclinic. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the, um, this uh, uh, originates from the chemical composition of the material. Uh, among these uh, uh, among these uh, structures, monoclinic phase is perfectly ordered fa ordered phase, as you see in uh, the figure, uh, and uh, the best per performing uh, CTS solar cells reported so far had a CTS absorber with monoclin monoclinic structure. So uh, here uh, I would like to uh, show uh, the ma maximum efficiency values. Uh, obtained uh, from uh, CTS-based solar cells. Uh, so, uh, Umera and has all obtained 6.7% uh, efficiency uh, by using cost sputtering system. Uh, and uh, here uh, you see uh, they uh, studied on uh, germanium doping in the material and uh, for from the sodium doped uh, cts material uh, which was produced by cost sputtering technique again the maximum efficiency value is equal to uh, 5.1 uh, which was reported by chantana et al and uh, for poor uh, uh, copper uh, copper tin sulfur material uh, the efficiency value is 4.2 uh, 
4.2 uh, reports by Kanai. They used co evaporation system, and for the sputtering method, the maximum efficiency is about 3.1. Uh, they, they obtained this value in uh, 2016. Uh, today, I will show you our efficiency result, uh, which is very close to this value. But uh, of course, uh, we uh, followed some different methods uh, to produce a solar cell. So uh, these uh, absorber films uh, can be uh, produced by vacuum-based approach or non-vacuum-based approach. Uh, I would like to say that the maximum efficiency, uh, the, the maximum uh, efficiency value um, obtained by uh, the solar cell device by using non-vacuum-based approach for castorite materials. Uh, but uh, Vacuum-based uh, 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 vacuum-based approach, uh, sputtering method is a very is a very uh, uh, good uh, option for large-scale uh, production in industry. So we uh, also uh, used uh, sputtering uh, technique for uh, uh, for our studies in our laboratory. Uh, for uh, sputtering method. Uh, uh, one uh, can follow one step process or two step process. Uh, so in one step process, uh, the um, copper, zinc, uh, tin and sulfur components uh, uh, can be deposited uh, simultaneously at high temperatures under H2S gas. Uh, in the second, uh, in, the, in, in two step process, in the first step, uh, at low temperatures, precursor films uh, are uh, deposited. Uh, in this uh, step, uh, you can follow the co-deposition or uh, the deposition of sequential stacks of elemental and uh, compound layers. Uh, and as a second step in this process, uh, the uh, precursor films are sulfurazide or selenazide at uh, high temperatures. Uh, up to uh, 550 Celsius of degree, and uh, the sulfurization or selenization uh, is conducted under sulfur atmosphere or H2S gas or uh, selenium atmos atmosphere uh, or uh, H2S gas. So that's the uh, device uh, structure for the castorite uh, based solar cells. Uh, here uh, you see uh, usually soda lime glass substrate is used uh, for uh, these uh, type of solar cells. Uh, actually, um, the soda lime glass substrates includes uh, sodium and uh, potassium uh, alkaline elements inside, and uh, the diffusion of sodium uh, and potassium elements from soda lime glass substrate through the, through the molybdenum back contact layer into the absorber layer uh, is uh, occurred uh, occurs uh, naturally naturally but uh, the uh, amount of potassium is still near to sodium uh, in the soda lime glass substrate and you see uh, here uh, uh, the, the uh, absorber layer is uh, coated on moly back contact substrate and buffer layer is uh, usually cadmium sulfide. Uh, the uh, device uh, with the maximum efficiency uh, value uh, is, um, includes uh, cadmium sulfide buffer layer, but because of the toxicity of the cadmium, uh, uh, the researchers uh, 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 focus on uh, uh, studying uh, different uh, buffer layers such as indium sulfide, uh, zinc sulfur, zinc oxide, and uh, so on. So that's the uh, and and then uh, you see the window layer uh, of the uh, device. So uh, in our works. Uh, we uh, produced uh, all of the films, all of the precursor films in this uh, system. Here you see the system has uh, three uh, targets, uh, three guns, uh, one uh, DC and two RF. 
and uh, distance between the uh, target and the substrate holder is about 12 centimeter. Uh, the target is tilted uh, uh, at uh, 45 degree to the uh, substrate. So for sulfurization and uh, salinization precursor films, we used uh, these uh, furnaces. Uh, the first furnace is uh, at our laboratory in uh, Turkey. Uh, we uh, sulfurize uh, the, uh, the films in this uh, system. It, it has two regions. As you see, it, it has two regions. Uh, you can uh, arrange uh, the temperature of the regions uh, separately in the system. And uh, the seleni selenization of the films was uh, conducted in uh, Vilnius University uh, by Professor Remigius Kuskenas and it's his group. Uh, here, the, they uh, used uh, a different, uh, a, a different uh, system for the salinization. It, uh, inside the tubular furnace, there is a graph graphite uh, container and you can put selenium or uh, uh, tin. Sometimes we used uh, tin in the salinization process because of the loss of tin in the material. So uh, we started to our studies by uh, deposition of molybdenum films. Uh, we used RF magnetron sputtering technique uh, to, deposition, to deposit the molybdenum films. Uh, actually, in these studies, we focused on uh, the, uh, uh, the electrical, uh, electrical uh, optical uh, properties of molybdenum films uh, because um, uh, both electrical and uh, optical, especially reflect reflectivity properties uh, of molybdenum films is very important for the uh, thin film solar cells because uh, if um, the reflectivity of the molybdenum back contact is high, uh, then the uh, absorption of the light into the absorber layer uh, will increase. That's why we focused on uh, the optical, uh, structural, and um, uh, electrical properties of uh, molybdenum films. As you see, we um, tried uh, some, uh, at first, uh, we focused on the uh, growth temperature of the films. And uh, then we focused on the working pressure because working pressure of argon atmosphere in this method strongly uh, affects the properties of the uh, moly molybdenum film. Uh, and also we uh, applied a uh, thermal annealing process after the deposition of the films at uh, 500 Celsius of degree for 30 minutes. Uh, so, uh, we uh, decreased the working pressure uh, to uh, five milliliter, as you see. Uh, and um, we uh, really obtained uh, very good uh, properties, electrical pro and optical properties uh, of molybdenum films uh, af after uh, our studies. So uh, we also uh, produced uh, molybdenum uh, back contact layer on, uh, on uh, aluminum oxide uh, coated uh, so soda lime glass substrate uh, because uh, we uh, investigated uh, investigated the sodium diffusion from uh, soda lime glass substrates into the absorber layer. Uh, that's why uh, we also produced uh, these uh, kind of substrates for our studies. Uh, that's just a barrier layer uh, to um, uh, uh, to hinder the sodium diffusion uh, from the soda lime gl glass substrates into the uh, absorber layer, partly, not uh, uh, completely, but partly. Uh, in uh, the position of precursor films, uh, we um, tried uh, some different methods. As a, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, we uh, used uh, co sputtering technique co-deposition of copper tin zinc sulfur targets. And here uh, you see the plasma chamber uh, for this uh, deposition. And uh, these are the uh, precursor films which we obtained by using this method. So uh, these uh, precursor films were uh, sulfur zide uh, 
uh, in uh, our laboratory uh, here you see we used uh, two zones of the uh, furnace uh, for the sulfurization and uh, we used uh, sulfur source sulfur powder 0 0.5 gram sulfur uh, powder as a sulfur source in the sulfurization process uh, so uh, in, in in this uh, process uh, we uh, applied uh, slow heating uh, for the sulfurization uh, so um, as a second way, uh, we uh, produced uh, precursor films by using zinc uh, tin, this time uh, uh, zinc uh, tin copper and zinc targets. Uh, so, uh, and also we applied uh, sequential stacked deposition technique uh, for uh, the um, deposition here. Uh, and uh, we uh, change uh, the sulfur sulfurization uh, process uh, a bit. Uh, as you see in the figure, uh, we uh, try to decrease the volume of the sulfurization chamber uh, by using this uh, cylindrical uh, uh, glass. And uh, also, um, uh, in in the first in the first process, uh, I, as I said, you we used uh, slow heating, but here uh, we um, increased uh, the heating rate, rate uh, for the sulfurization. And uh, in another study, uh, we uh, focused on zinc and zinc sulfur targets. The difference be, uh, the uh, uh, effect of uh, use the, uh, using uh, zinc or uh, zinc sulfur tar targets uh, in the precursor film. Here uh, you see we produced uh, these uh, sequential uh, stacked uh, layers. And uh, these uh, films uh, were uh, selen selenzite in uh, Vilnius University. Uh, in this uh, 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 selenization system. Uh, in, uh, in this process, uh, we used uh, a gas mixture of argon and H2 with uh, ratios of 95% and uh, 5% for uh, 30 minutes. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, this was a pre-annealing uh, process uh, at uh, 350 Celsius of degree. Uh, we used uh, H2 gas uh, in this uh, process uh, because uh, uh, to, 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 pre to prevent uh, the reaction between the metallic layers and the oxygen. And uh, in this uh, process, uh, we put 5.5 uh, milligram of uh, tin powder with uh, uh, 13 milligram of selenium powder uh, because uh, to, to, uh, to avoid uh, tin loss. In another uh, study, as you see, uh, we uh, uh, examine, examine uh, the uh, so sodium, fluor sodium fluoride uh, uh, precursor. Uh, we uh, uh, we investigated the incorporation of sodium alkaline element into uh, copper zinc tin sulfide precursor films by adding RF, RF spattered sodium fluoro intermediate layers. Uh, here uh, you see. Um, in the first stack, we deposited sodium fluor, very thin uh, sodium fluor layer on moly moly layer. And in the second stack, we uh, deposited sodium fluor layer both on moly moly layer and also and also among the uh, intermediate um, uh, layers uh, in the precursor uh, stacks. Actually, we uh, brought a new approach to the bifacial sodium incorporated treatment. Uh, with this study, I will mention about the results later. So, uh, these uh, the sulfurization of the process of these films. Uh, I have already mentioned about this uh, sulfurization in a previous slide. So, uh, uh, lastly, uh, we uh, tried to sulfurize uh, the uh, precursor films in uh, one region of the furnace, as you see in the first figure. So uh, here uh, we just try to uh, 
uh, investigate uh, the effect of uh, sulfurization volume uh, onto the uh, properties of the material. And, uh, and uh, here you see a graphite box in the end of our studies. Uh, we decided to use these graphite box, uh, which is uh, provided by Professor Greminok uh, from Belarus. Uh, the best results uh, uh, were obtained with uh, these graphite box. For uh, CTS uh, uh, films, uh, we have a lot of experience. We had a lot of experience uh, by uh, these studies and um, Actually, uh, our, uh, our results uh, on uh, CTS films are better than Kesterite films. Uh, uh, here uh, you see we uh, deposited precursor layers in uh, three uh, different in uh, uh, three different process at the beginning. Uh, and also we, uh, we still investigate uh, the effect of a thin, uh, aluminum oxide layer on soda lime glass substrates. We investigate the sodium diffusion mechanism uh, in uh, these films. And uh, we also uh, produced, uh, <clears throat> we, we also uh, produced uh, some uh, precursor films with different structure you see. For example, uh, uh, after we uh, obtained uh, uh, that to, that our films uh, uh, are uh, copper uh, slightly copper rich uh, and uh, slightly copper uh, slightly uh, tin poor then uh, we decided to put uh, another tin layer on the uh, precursor films and also we uh, tried sandwich uh, structure of uh, this uh, CTS 111 uh, sample uh, uh, CTS 1, uh, 11 uh, and uh, CTS 12 has uh, the same uh, thickness in totally, but uh, the uh, structure is different. One of them, it has a sandwich structure. And uh, here uh, you see, we used uh, a different uh, sulfurization process for these films in graphite box, because uh, it's uh, different from uh, the previous uh, process. Uh, we put uh, tin and sulfur in graphite box and also the precursor films inside it. So we change uh, the sulfurization process. So uh, let's look at the results. Here uh, you see the uh, SEM uh, image of the moly films uh, he, uh, in the first. Uh, part, you see we change the temperature and uh, depending to the uh, temperature, uh, the um, shape of the grains uh, change and also the voids in the grains, the grain boundaries uh, and the roughness uh, are very sensitive to the substrate uh, temperature in this method. And uh, these uh, strongly affect the sodium diffusion mechanism in molyfilms. Uh, and um, another uh, important uh, parameter is argon pressure. Here uh, you see uh, when you decrease the argon pressure, you can obtain uh, the films with uh, lower resistivity. Uh, we also investigated the sodium diffusion mechanism from uh, moly, mo moly films according to the substrate temperature and um, um, argon gas pressure. Uh, I can say that it's very sensitive to the substrate substrate temperature, but uh, it's uh, it it didn't uh, change so much according to the uh, argon pressure gas, the sodium. I mean the sodium diffusion mechanism. Uh, the uh, uh, when you increase the substrate temperature, the sodium diffusion mechanism is, uh, increases as well. Uh, for uh, reflectivity of the molybdenum films, at first, at the beginning, uh, we obtained uh, low uh, reflectivity films, as you see in the figure, uh, the average reflectivity variation between 18 uh, 
and uh, 40, uh, uh, 48 uh, percent. And uh, uh, then uh, when we change uh, the uh, argon gas pressure and substrate temperature, according to our experiences, you see here the reflectivity of the uh, film uh, we, uh, got increased. We obtained uh, molyfilms uh, with the reflectivity up to uh, uh, 50, uh, 55, actually 57 uh, well, uh, percent. These uh, are really good values for in terms of reflectance. And um, we uh, repeated our uh, production uh, for uh, Aluminium oxide, uh, uh, aluminium uh, oxide coated uh, soda lime glass substrates. We obtained uh, similar results for these uh, substrates. Here uh, you see the uh, the uh, resistivity of the films uh, will uh, dec uh, decreased decreased uh, uh, up to uh, the order of uh, ten to. 10 to uh, minus 5 uh, ohm centimeter. So uh, if we look at the results uh, of the uh, CZATS films, that's the uh, first uh, uh, film which we uh, produced. Here you see we used this sulfurization process. We used uh, two both of the uh, furnace, as I said to you before. Uh, but uh, in this uh, study, actually, uh, uh, a lot of uh, secondary phases on the surface uh, formed, as you see in SEN image. So, uh, and also we obtained the secondary phases with uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy analysis. Uh, for these materials, uh, casterite and CTS films, uh, the XRD peaks overlaps, so uh, it's uh, necessary to uh, investigate uh, the crystal, the, the structure of the films by Raman spectroscopy. Here you see we didn't see secondary phases in XRD um, uh, analysis, XRD pattern, but we obtained the secondary phases by Raman spectroscopy. So. Uh, uh, the, uh, here uh, you see uh, the quality of the uh, casterite materials increased uh, by changing the sulfurization process uh, and the secondary phases on the surfaces uh, increased uh, uh, significantly. Uh, you see only uh, some uh, secondary phases uh, which are probably related to copper uh, sulfur uh, secondary phases. And uh, the grain size increased of the material. So uh, uh, the, the, this is really a very important point for uh, the material. The um, properties of the, the structural properties uh, of the material uh, is influenced strongly by the sulfur sulfurization chamber, especially the uh, partial pressure of uh, uh, chal uh, calcogen. And uh, we obtained uh, the films uh, with the uh, 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 absorption coefficient of uh, 10 to the 5 uh, per centimeter. And the band gap value of the film uh, is about 1.4 electron volt. By using these films, we produced a, a solar cell, but um, the uh, buffer layer uh, was fabricated by RF magnetron sputtering, as you know. In literature, uh, usually uh, cadmium, uh, the, uh, cadmium sulfur, sulfide buffer layer is produced by um, ke chemical bed deposition technique. Uh, the, um, but in this study, we produced it uh, by uh, RF magnetron sputtering technique. So uh, the efficiency value is uh, low, not so high. Here you see it's about 1.64%, but still the difference uh, of our study uh, from the studies in literature is, uh, uh, use, is uh, to use cadmium sulfur uh, buffer layer deposited by RF magnetron. But 
we uh, also um, in uh, study on uh, sodium uh, sodium diffusion from uh, uh, soda lime glass substrate through the molybdenum layer into the absorber layer. Here you see uh, sodium element with a green color. It, it has an, uh, a homogeneous distribution in moly, in moly layer and also in a CTS, a casteride absorber. So these are the uh, selenazide films in Vilnius University by Professor Remigi Gusius Kenas. Uh, uh, and uh, we uh, start, we focused on the uh, effect of uh, zinc or uh, zinc sulfur target uh, used in uh, precursor films in this study. So uh, according to SEM results, here you see uh, a very uh, thick uh, molybdenum selenide uh, layer, uh, molybdenum selenide layer uh, between the moly and uh, CTS absorber layer uh, when we use a zinc target. Uh, in, uh, the, the, when we use a zinc sulfur target, the thickness of the, moly, the molybdenum selenide layer decreased. You see. And also we obtained some uh, secondary phases on the first uh, on the surface of the films. Uh, these uh, uh, were uh, removed from a uh, uh, potassium cyan uh, aging process. Uh, here uh, you see the uh, EDX mapping uh, analysis of the films. Uh, you can obviously see uh, these uh, structures uh, with uh, rounded shape structures on the surfaces uh, corresponds to uh, copper uh, selenide uh, secondary phases. And, uh, and uh, um, here uh, you see the uh, resistivity, uh, carrier density, and mobility, mobility uh, uh, electrical parameters of the films. We also uh, 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 investigate the electrical properties of the films. That's the uh, study uh, related on sodium incorporation into uh, castorite uh, tin film materi materials. Uh, so uh, in this uh, study, uh, I can say that the, when you uh, put uh, sodium uh, fluoride uh, precursors uh, among the uh, precursor text, we uh, uh, obtained uh, better results. Uh, here you see uh, from the cross-sectional image, but the uh, secondary phases of um, secondary phases on the surfaces of the film increased uh, in the second stack. Another interesting results in this study is uh, about the uh, sodium diffusion mechanism. As I said you uh, before, uh, we uh, didn't we didn't use uh, an uh, aluminum oxide or uh, another barrier layer. Uh, on soda lime glass substrates. In, in this study, we investigated uh, sodium diffusion mechanism uh, both from soda lime glass substrate and also the so sodium fluoride precursor layers, uh, which uh, was coated on uh, moly substrate. Uh, in our previous study, we didn't obtain such result. Here uh, you see uh, sodium element which is shown with blue color in the figure. Um, there, there is a bump on, uh, near to the uh, soda lime glass substrate and moly interface. Uh, and also, if you look at the interface of uh, CTS and moly layer, uh, you see uh, the, uh, the sodium uh, diffusion mechanism uh, occurred in both directions. In, uh, in the direction of moly layer and also in the direction of uh, CTS layer. That's, that was an interesting result, which is consistent with uh, the uh, 
behavior of uh, actually a function of uh, mol molybdenum layer because as you know moly layer is a path for sodium diffusion mechanism so we obtained uh, such a result uh, with um, the uh, so, so, sodium diffusion mechanism uh, occurred in uh, both directions and uh, we obtained a bump at the interface of the soda lime glass substrate and moly layer so uh, and also the uh, uh, incorporation sodium incorporation increased the carrier concentration of the film um, for uh, for uh, cts films uh, we uh, mentioned about that it has a polymorphic structure uh, triclinic monoclinic or cubic structure can be uh, for um, can be formed uh, uh, in the material and uh, it's very difficult to distinguish the uh, crystal structure in the film by xrd um, analysis here you see there is uh, uh, only very small differences between the uh, of the material uh, it's it's really very uh, difficult so uh, you should uh, analyze the materials with Raman spectroscopy, it's necessary. Uh, we uh, sulfurized uh, these films uh, at different sulfurization times, 10, uh, 20, 30, and four minutes. Uh, I, here I uh, just put uh, some examples. Uh, for uh, 10 minutes, for example, for 10 minutes sulfurization time uh, in the structure, uh, we, in, in XRD analysis, we, uh, observed triclinic structure uh, and uh, for uh, 10 minutes sulfur sulfur aside uh, film uh, which uh, was coated on uh, aluminum oxide soda lime glass substrate we obtain monoclinic structure and uh, here you see also uh, the uh, sulfur aside film at uh, for 30 minutes uh, it uh, exhibited monoclinic structure in XRD analysis, but if we investigate them by Raman spectroscopy analysis, you see uh, in the structure uh, the, there are also monoclinic and triclinic crystal structures. And uh, also uh, with uh, increasing the sulfurization time, here you see the peak uh, belong, belongs to uh, copper sulfur, uh, the intensity of this peak. Uh, get decreased. So we decided to use for, uh, 30 and uh, for uh, 40 minutes uh, for the sulfurization of uh, the CTS films. Here you see uh, SEM cross-sectional image of the films uh, for 30 minutes and uh, for 40 minutes we obtained better results as you see in the, from the uh, SEM image. And uh, we are still working on these uh, materials. Uh, we didn't uh, report it. Uh, we, we didn't report it uh, yet, but uh, it's a good result uh, when we uh, evaluate the best efficiencies on these materials. We obtained a 3.11% uh, efficiency value for uh, this uh, solar cell structure. Here you see we used indium sulfur buffer layer uh, for the solar cell device. That's really a good value. Uh, uh, for uh, especially for uh, the sulfur side film uh, uh, at for uh, 30 minutes, here you see the efficiency value uh, was uh, 2.9 at the beginning. And then we uh, uh, and it, uh, the, the, the structure of indium sulfur CTS moly and uh, soda lime glass uh, substrate, we, uh, we uh, annealed uh, this structure and uh, we saw that the efficiency value uh, mm. got increased uh, before the, uh, before the uh, formation of the solar cell, uh, we thermally uh, annealed uh, this uh, structure. So uh, now I'm uh, at the end of my uh, talk. Uh, so uh, if we summarize our uh, results, uh, so uh, the precursor, uh, when we compared the uh, deposition approach 
of the precursor films, I can uh, say that uh, sequential stack deposition approach uh, um, uh, exhibits a better quality uh, of the films. And for the sulfurization process, uh, uh, the sulfurization parameters such as uh, the amount of sulfur powder, the partial pressure of sulfur vapor, sulfurization time, temperature, and the volume of sulfurization atmosphere, atmosphere is very important. Uh, it's uh, really uh, very important uh, uh, in terms of uh, obtaining the best uh, quality, uh, better quality films. And uh, 30 and 40 minutes, uh, for our uh, precursor films, uh, we obtained uh, the better results in graphite box, and we obtained 1.64% uh, efficiency with, uh, from this uh, structure, uh, which has a buffer layer produced by cadmium uh, sulfide uh, layer uh, produced by RF magnetron sputtering and 3.11% uh, efficiency value um, we obtained uh, from uh, this uh, solar cell structure, uh, which has immune sulfur uh, buffer layer. So uh, our works on to improving the castorite and uh, CTS absorbers quality, sodium incorporation into the films, especially into the CTS absorbers, and um, investigation on the sodium diffusion mechanism from soda lime glass substrates with and without aluminum oxide barrier layers on soda lime glass substrate uh, still uh, going uh, goes on, go on uh, and also uh, the uh, alternative buffer layers such as indium sulfide buffer layer are going on okay thank you very much uh, so uh, for listening Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Nifli Ganaki, for your wonderful uh, presentation. <clears throat> there are three questions in the chat box, Professor. I will read out. You please answer for that. The okay. first question is asked by Denzil Brito. His question is, is there any moisture or water content in the sulfurization or salinization tank? Uh, sorry. Uh... Uh, sorry, uh, could you please turn again? Yeah, his question is, is there any moisture or water content in the sulfurization or salinization tank? Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't get the uh, question. Uh, could you please uh, type on chat box? Yes, yes, I will type it. So, I'm so sorry, I couldn't get the question. Yeah, uh, can you able to read the uh, question okay, in the chat okay. box? I, I saw the question in chat box. Is there any moisture or water content in the sulfurization or salinization tank? No. Uh, most moisture may be, uh, uh, I'm not... Uh, 1% uh, sure about that, uh, but uh, we uh, purged the sulfurization systems with a vacuum pan uh, by argon gas before uh, we start to sulfurization. Uh, water content also doesn't include in the sulfurization or salinization, uh, salinization tank. So uh, I, I see the questions in the chat box. So. Uh, so uh, it's other question is related on uh, zinc oxide and metal possible application of humidity and temperature and pressure since using this battery. So, um, uh, so um, Dr. I have wrote uh, three questions in the chat box, Professor. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. I see now. Thank you. So uh, the other question is zinc oxide metal 
possible application of humidity and temperature and pressure sensor using uh, DC sputtering. Uh, so, uh, I, 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 I couldn't get exactly the meaning of this question. Ah, so the he next just asked uh, whether yeah. zinc oxide metal that was yeah. uh, created by DC sputtering is it useful for the application of humidity and the temperature process sensor? Uh, I don't have any idea about that. Ah, sorry. Okay, 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 no problem. Prof. The next so, question so, is uh, for CTS film preparation. Yeah. Uh, Sol gel method or a sputtering technology, which one is best? Uh, for the industrial uh, applications, uh, I would prefer sputtering technique. Uh, in it's, it's, it has uh, many advantages in terms of uh, large scale uh, production. Uh, so I think sputtering technique is better, much better. Yeah, uh, and okay. if you look uh, at the best efficiency, uh, if you look at the best efficiency values, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning of our talk, my talk, uh, you saw uh, the best efficiencies uh, were obtained by using vacuum-based uh, techniques. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Professor. One participant would like to ask a question with you. Yeah. Uh, Sukhdev Pandey. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, uh, Dr. Neslihan. I was not able to listen to the whole of your lecture because of some technical issues. So I hope my question is still genuine. Uh, but my question was that, uh, how do we achieve uh, intrinsic doping, like especially like creating vacancies? And how does like interstitial doping differ from external doping? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, the uh, intrinsic doping is related to uh, the uh, material. So, I mean, uh, it's... Uh, wait, wait a second, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, um, I mean, the intrinsic doping is uh, related to uh, matter related to composition of the material. Uh, so, uh, the the best uh, composition uh, for castorite materials: uh, copper, uh, copper, uh, poor zinc rich, and uh, tin uh, stoichiometric material. Uh, right. If you, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, the the uh, the off stoichiometry is uh, best option for these materials. Uh, mm. So um, intrinsic doping, uh, these uh, de defects, vacancies, interstitials, anti-sites, and defect clusters occurs naturally in the material according to the composition. So um, I see. Okay. So the extrinsic doping, uh, you uh, dope or uh, you alloy the material by using the doping elements, which uh, I mentioned. Right, so basically this is about like the radius ratio, like what are the size of the interstitial voids and like what is the like the ratio of the cations of the anions we're trying to do. And depending yeah. on that, uh, can we, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, the, okay. the, the composition uh, influence, uh, the band gap value uh, of right. the material and so on. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. My next question is, uh, like you showed one, one slide where you uh, compared the different SEM images uh, based on uh, uh, different temperatures and pressures. There was like a difference in grain distribution depending on temperature and pressure. Can you tell me uh, which one is the better grain uh, distribution for our application? Uh... You mean you mean moly films or CT, uh, CZTS films? I think it was CZTS films. Yeah, okay. So uh, here, uh, okay. Yeah, this one, yes. Uh, for, for, for example, for uh, this uh, absorber layer, you see we obtained a uh, uh, the, the grain size of the material increased 
uh, by changing the salvarization process. But for the uh, first right. study, you see, uh, we followed uh -huh. uh, slow heating and also uh -huh. we used a uh, two zone of the uh, uh, furnace. And uh, right. when you increase the volume of the uh, sulfurization, then uh, uh -huh. the, secondary, uh, the, the amount of the secondary phases increased. Right, right. But like in, in that slide where you were comparing the temperatures and the pressure, could you tell me like which would be the better distribution? Uh, the temperature is uh, about uh, 550 uh, Celsius of degree for the sulfurization process and uh, pr uh, mm, the pressure, wait, wait a second, please. Uh, okay, uh, the pressure is uh, about, working pressure is uh, about mm -hmm. uh, 8 millibar, 8 millibar okay. as you see here. But uh, before the uh, process, we uh, purge the sulfurization system uh, at base pressure uh, approximately uh, 10 to the mi minus 5 millibar. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Elsenho. Thank you. So, uh, I think uh, one of the participants, Dr. Nahita Miyasev. Yeah. He would like to ask yeah. a question. So, yeah, yes, please, please proceed, uh, Nahida. Uh, but I, ca I cannot hear you uh, now. Uh, no, I, I, I cannot hear uh, her. Uh, Nahida, if possible, could you type in the chat box? Okay, it's okay. Yes, it's okay now. Uh -huh. Yes, it's okay now. Yes, it's okay now. Sorry. Uh, could could you please uh, write your question in chat box? Uh, Dr. Nagida, could you please type your question in the chat box? Hello, <laughs> Mada. Ah, okay, I can hear you now. Yes? Yes, ah, okay. I can hear you properly. Okay. Uh, Naslian? Yes, please. Just a moment. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's okay Naslian, now. thank you very much for interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, compliment for you. Uh, just one question about the sulfurization process, because uh, you show here cuprum uh, zinc uh, uh, stannum sulfide, yes, material, uh, sulfide form. Uh, what the role of the sulfurization process, how you control the stoichiometry uh, during the sulfurization process, because uh, uh, you, you show here uh, exactly uh, sulfide or selenide four in the stoichiometry. Just my question is that uh, how you uh, control this, this stoichiometry during the sulfurization? So, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the question. Yeah, it's, it's really very difficult to control the composition of these materials. So uh, that's why we used a uh, very different uh, sulfurization process approach in our studies. And the, may, uh, the, the, the key is, uh, I think the key is uh, to, uh, is related to uh, volume of the sulfurization atmosphere. Uh, uh, after our uh, experiments, uh, we decided to use the graphite box, which we showed here which uh, that's the best option 
for the sulfurization process because you uh, decreased the volume and uh, you uh, increased the partial pro pressure of the uh, uh, calcogen, uh, I mean sulfur. Uh, so uh, in this way, you uh, uh, avoid you can avoid uh, you can avoid thin loss in the material yeah if 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 there is a big thin loss in the material then uh, a lot of uh, different uh, de defects occurs in the material uh, which is very detrimental for the efficiency value uh, so i would recommend uh, to you uh, to focus on the volume of the uh, sulfurization chamber. It's really very important. And also uh, the um, amount of sulfur is also very important. Uh, it uh, approximately include 50% uh, of sulfur in the material. So. Uh, just one more. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, yeah, yes, after that, I know that uh, sulfur, sulfur and selenide type uh, calcogenic materials, they are not so much stable uh, such as uh, oxide materials, I know, huh? because I have uh, experience in my yeah, yeah, right. previous works. Yes, uh, but uh, how you can, uh, uh, what do you think uh, after uh, uh, several times, uh, sunlight or temperature, how it can influence to the, the psychometry or co 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 these uh, components, uh, I, I mean sulfide or selenides, uh, because they are vaporized some time to times. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. it will be stable your uh, uh, structure, uh, com uh, uh, content is uh, selenide or sulfide? how you can uh... yeah uh, you are you are right uh, uh, we actually we uh, we achieved to control the stability of uh, the feelings uh, when we start to study on cts feelings uh, cts feelings are more uh, stable compared to casterite materials because it doesn't include zinc, zinc element. Because of high vapor pressure of the zinc element, for example, if you, if you use zinc reach at your production process, still there can be a zinc poor material at the end of the production. So uh, absent of a uh, zinc element in the uh, in the material uh, uh, such uh, as uh, CTS films uh, uh, this, this is more easier uh, to control uh, the uh, stability of the films uh, so uh, yeah I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> Well, <laughs> okay, okay, we Makari, can uh, discuss have, uh, uh, later. Uh, Thank you very much, Nesli. Yeah, yeah, that, that. Thank, Thank you, organizer. You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Nagida. And uh, on behalf of the organizing committee of this East M21 and our college management, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Nesli uh, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, on your business schedule. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Babu. Thank you very much, Dr. Babu. Thank you so much, Mama. We will soon. We'll soon. OK. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Uh, thank the, for the information participants, there will be four sessions on tomorrow. Uh, the first session will be handled by Dr. Jinzo from University of Leeds, United Kingdom. And the second session will be handled by Dr. Gupron uh, from the University of Paulo, Finland. And the third session will be handled by eminent professor Lorenzo from uh, Italy. 
and the fourth session will be handled by professor uh, maria monica from romania so the four topics are uh, uh, excellent topics that will be very new to this kind of material research the information will be shared with you in your respective whatsapp group uh, and the same detail will be sent to you through email so please find that uh, please try to join the meeting 10 minutes before a uh, scheduled meeting thank you so much thank you so much the participants see you all tomorrow okay yeah thank you so much dr mishra